our studios in New York, here again is Stone Phillips. We've seen dramatic examples of nature's wrath, but what about the weather, the bitter cold and blistering heat we've had over the past few years? Is nature displaying her wrath in a different way? There are many answers to that question, but more and more scientists are now agreeing that the weather is going to extremes, and we may be the ones pushing it there. Here's chief science correspondent Robert Bazell. It is miserable. I think my eyeballs have frozen. This is incredible. I've never seen this much snow in years. This is beyond my imagination. So I open up the garage door. <laughs> Water. President Clinton declared the entire state of Minnesota a federal disaster area. What's happening to the weather? Chicago's heat emergency peaked on Thursday. It's a grim scene outside Chicago's morgue. We've identified 116 heat-related fatalities. I've asked the president to declare Chicago a disaster area. Is something going wrong with the weather? Are we changing the weather? Almost everybody uh, agrees that we've changed the gaseous envelope of the atmosphere. The balance of evidence suggests a discernible human influence on climate. The problem, and most of the world's experts now agree that there is a problem, is simply this. We burn things. And everything we burn since the dawn of mankind, from a single match to a backyard barbecue to a cup full of gasoline to a billion gallons of no lead to the fuel for a world that flies, to the mightiest factories, to Saddam Hussein's vengeance on the oil fields of Kuwait pours gases into the atmosphere of the planet. Currently, six billion tons of carbon dioxide, or CO2, every year. We are, in fact, a civilization built on burning. As those gases build up in our skies, they begin to trap and hold in more of the sun's heat, the way a greenhouse does. The result, say most scientists, a gradual warming of the planet. Now, 2,500 of the world's leading climate scientists have produced an enormous document for the United Nations. It concludes that, yes, we probably are changing the world's weather, changing it in ways that could forever alter the planet we call home. The scientists say all that burning has already increased the planet's surface temperature by about one degree Fahrenheit. If we don't control the burning, they forecast, the next century, could see a rise in temperatures of another two to six degrees. What might that mean? Already, they say, glaciers are melting. This satellite photograph shows an iceberg the size of Rhode Island cracking away from Antarctica. As the ice melts, they warn, oceans will rise. We're experiencing winds of more than 170 kilometers an hour. A warmer atmosphere will hold more water and dump more in storms, winter and summer. No matter what you do, no matter how many sandbags you fill, no matter how many people you bring over, it just gets deeper. Government scientists say extreme rain and snowfalls have been increasing for 20 years. Though they warn, you can't blame any single bad year on global warming. Not even this one. It's a hot one out there once again, a record tying 100 degrees of Then there's the heat. Government scientists say the 80s and 90s have produced some of the hottest years since records have been kept. As the warming continues, summers, especially the nights, are likely to get even hotter. Winters may be shorter, but the blizzards could get more intense because of the extra moisture in the skies. People who make their living burning things disagree. I don't think there is any risk of catastrophic global warming. I do not. Fred Palmer is chief executive officer of Western Fuels, a consortium of coal-fired power plants, one of the biggest sources of greenhouse gas. The energy industry, the auto industry, and oil-producing nations in the Middle East are already spending millions of dollars in lobbying, campaign contributions, and PR efforts like this videotape, hoping to convince us and Congress to set no new limits on burning. The industry argument? Increased greenhouse gas is actually good for the Earth. You will have a wetter world. You will have a greener, warmer, wetter world. Good for agriculture, good for plant life, good for the forest, more animals. That is totally consistent with greening. You, who represent people who burn coal, say that enhanced CO2 is good for the world in many ways. A huge environmental community, and a lot of scientists say it's bad. 
Why should we believe you who want to burn coal? First of all, I don't say it. I'm telling you what the science says. The positive impact of CO2 on the biosphere has not been explored by those that promote this vision of apocalypse that's coming at us in 50 or 100 years. But Professor Steven Schneider, one of the authors of that UN report on global warming, thinks we're playing roulette with the future of our planet. We're performing an experiment on this lab. It's a lab, however, that happens to be Earth, and it's not made up of, you know, of glass and, and wires. It's uh, made up of soils and animals and insects and us. Schneider says the best that science can do is predict the odds of global warming and its consequences. The odds on sea levels rising one to three feet over the next century? I think rising sea levels are very probable. In fact, they're already a fact. It works just like the thermometer. You know, you have a tube and you have a fluid in the tube, and when you heat the thermometer, what happens is the fluid expands. So if you're going to heat up the oceans, they really don't have any other choice. They have to get larger. The odds on more severe storms? I would, if I were a gambler, assign a slightly better than even chance that we'll see increased intensity of hurricanes. And it's the intensity, the storm surge, and the wind damage, and so forth, that's most important. And that's a very critical issue for us to understand. Steven Schneider thinks there's a 10% chance global warming won't have much effect at all by the year 2100. But he also thinks there's a 10% chance it will trigger utter global catastrophe you'd see increases in intensity of storms. Uh, you'd see very intense droughts and floods. There'd be a lot more of them extremes like we had in Chicago when the heat waves of 95 would be more frequent. Species would start becoming extinct at a very fast rate. You can conjure up a whole lot of, of worst case scenarios uh, that would run to uh, trillions of dollars of damage. You said sometimes you feel like you need to be an advocate as well as a scientist. Do you sometimes exaggerate dangers? We're citizens in the world. We want people to understand dangers that we legitimately believe are possible. How do you get attention? Well, you get attention by discussing worst cases. I think the obligation that we have to society is to tell people what can happen and what we think the odds are of it happening. Like most global warming scientists, Schneider says he's not asking for massive changes in the way we live, just a modest tilt toward alternative power sources like windmills and solar cells that don't burn anything. I'm not calling for elimination of the fossil fuel industry tomorrow. That would lead to poverty, which would lead to worse environmental catastrophe than the ones we have. What I'm calling for is slowing it down a little bit. Nevertheless, the U.S. government sets no limits on carbon dioxide emissions. All the nation's clean air laws are designed to control pollutants that directly affect health. All that CO2, which is odorless and invisible from fossil fuel burning, goes directly into the skies unchecked. We must leave this earth in better condition than we found it. In 1992, Today, President Bush agreed to the Rio Treaty, treaty pledging to cut greenhouse gases back to 1990 levels. But the treaty's never been implemented. Has any coal plant been retired because of fears about global warming? No, we are, uh, we're doing very, very well. Uh, coal burn is going up. So nobody has done anything to your industry or a related industry because of fears of global warming, right? No, it hasn't happened. So it's business as usual on planet Earth. This time next year, for good or ill, there'll be another six billion tons of greenhouse gas in our atmosphere. It's possible, of course, that everyone's predictions are partly right. Greenhouse gases could have good effects as well as bad. Nevertheless, most scientists believe that for our planet, rapid change is change for the worse. And that if we don't control the burning, the next couple of generations had better get ready for a lot of rough weather ahead. The fight over global warming takes center stage next December in Kyoto, Japan. All the nations that signed the Rio Treaty will decide whether to impose mandatory controls on greenhouse gases or stay with a voluntary system, which so far is having little impact.